Hey friends, it's Brian. It's time for another Jeep video. I think this one's like 79 or 80. Anyway, I decided that I want to add a transmission cooler to my Jeep because I have an automatic transmission and he eats transmissions and it's Texas and it's oh about 100 and what the hell out. Yeah, it's really hot. So, um, I bought a Hayden, oh, what is this thing? 678, so it's a pretty hefty transmission cooler. Um, it needs to be installed in the, um, it needs to be installed here. And there is a minimum three inch bend on the, uh, the hose. So I'm going to go straight to um, nipples that make a 90 degree. Um, so the first things first, we got to get this mounted and this is not going to secure to any of this. So I think about right there is right. So let me get a tape measure. Uh, free tape measure is always a great tape measure. So we're going to, we're going to use this. Um, it looks like 11 inch and 11 and 9 is more than sufficient. So let me get a couple pieces. I'm going to use some aluminum that I've got. So let me find something to cut that and get that cut. I don't think there's anything exciting about me watching me cut aluminum. So I'm not going to film that. Well, I'll fuck it. I'll film it. Doesn't matter. Oh, this would be so easy if I had my um, full shop set up, but I don't, so it is what it is. Let me get the saw. Okay, so these are just rough cuts. trim a little bit more. Not a problem. Uh, let me get the saw set up for this. And then we will go to town. have a good place to work. Let's see if I can break one up here. Alright, I'm gonna go take this to the device. I'll be back. And there you go. Like magic. So what this is gonna do is allow this to sit over top of this that way it can back up against the
Alright, so I have decided where I want to modify the Jeep frame. Let me find the suitable. I'm going to use number 10 screws. I think that's more than sufficient, so I got to find a drill bit for these. Uh, I'm going to start with a small one. Maybe not. I was afraid of it. It's, it's trying to walk off. It's weird. I thought I had a center punch. It's a real specific tool for this. All right. Okay. Let's scratch that. I own a center punch. I had no idea where the hell it's at. one.
Alright. Well, that's one way to get those parts out of there. Alright, now I gotta find a drill bit that is the size of my number 10s. I uh, probably should have kept that small bit out, so. That's about right. please. So, now I need to look at this and see how much, hmm. not a lot. So this is getting replaced. I just need to see how much clearance I've got. 
if I can run the screw up. And the answer is none. There is no clearance. this upside down anyway and I want it down on this end not at the other side. Well that's an important detail. Because that means we just drilled four holes for nothing. But I think I can rescue this, and I think I can actually eliminate the aluminum pieces, which would be ideal. But I'm going to have to redo quite a bit. So, life in the fast lane. Fabrication and improvisation are pretty much the same animal. these. get another well, let's see if this is the right length yes we'll get some more stuff over okay, so I have a fairly nice selection of hardware at my disposal because one time I got irritated with going to Home Depot and not being able to find something 
And so I bought a whole bunch of hardware so that it would never happen again. And one of the questions we've got right now is, will this work? Yes, that is about the maximum amount of clearance that we're going to get. going to be very tight down here at the bottom and that's okay. Um, I, that, that's just fine. without center punch. Okay, so I'm going to have to set this up in order to uh, do what I need to do. Unfortunately, it's not going to make for a good camera angle, and I'm sorry about that.
to make for a horrible camera angle. As it falls completely apart. Alright, there's one. And let me rotate this and repeat the magic. there is another way to do this. You could just remove this, these three bolts. But I'm going to try and do it the way most people will have to work on this. if I can do it this way. And I think I can. I mean, I've got the nut balancing on the screw. Although this screw doesn't feel as long as the others. Eh, there it goes. All right. Now, there's a couple different ways to tighten this, but and the temptation to use big tools is there, but it's not necessary. I mean, after all, these are number 10 screws. Now I'm using uh, nylon hex nuts. Uh, I don't like to play around with lock washers and all that other horse shit that can be difficult.
think five sixteenths is going to be. No, it's not. Hmm. All right. Let's see if it's three eighths. Yes. Again, this is how most people are going to do this. So you might take this brace off, but... Taking the brace off might open up more issues than it gets rid of. got that installed. And double check that we don't have any headaches. I don't see any. So, uh, this needs to go in. I'm not ready to work on this tonight, so what's going to happen tomorrow is I'm going to install the new one of these, the new radiator, and the shroud, and install that as an assembly. But, I'm going to bring my hoses out over here. Air conditioning is on this side, so my hoses for my transmission cooler are going to come out over here. So we can work on that tonight. Not a lot of space there, and that's okay. So, came with some really nice hose. This is probably going to be more than enough. It's Gates. Uh, let's see. I'm going to probably need more of this. That's why I'm looking to see what it is. Uh, I really need my um, tools that I use for uh, plumbing. Let me see if I can find those. Okay, so after a whole lot of hassle, I found what I was looking for, which is my tubing cutters.
not sure this is the best fitting for this. I'd rather have a long turn. Okay, so at this point, we've got a nice uh, arc up to here. And I think we're going to do the same thing we've done elsewhere. A little tiny dab will do you. Very small amount of motor oil as lubricant is not going to hurt this. And then that'll work just fine. Okay, so next. I'm going to take just a little bit off this.
And at this point, we are pretty much done. It needs to be cut there. I'm going to definitely need more of that. And I'm going to need more of these. I may or may not need more angles, but God, these look an awful lot like PEX parts. I just think they're more expensive because it said automotive on it. That's it for tonight. Uh, I will pick up more of this in a little uh, tomorrow, and we'll get this installed into the Jeep. Real question is: Are we going to completely bypass the cooler that's built into the radiator? I might just. I got to research that. All right, folks. New day, so let's get busy with it. is the replacement what an interesting packaging a giant cardboard box with a coil wrapped inside of another box but hey there it is let's see what we got Pretty much perfect. Missing the uh, rubber strip. Let me see if that is salvageable off the old one. So it's this little piece here and no, that's not salvageable. I don't think it's that big of a deal. So what we need is for this to go in here like that. Why is it suddenly... Oh, okay, these are up out of the way. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to set this down for a minute. I want to secure these a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to basically band these together a little bit. I just don't want them rubbing around in here.
me find the size for this. I'll be right back. That's the quarter, which is what I would normally expect for that. So the, the Chinese ones are smaller. And apparently it's not quite a quarter, but it's close. So, the idea here is that uh, these will exit, and then I can work on it outside. You know, won't be a big deal. All right, so let's go ahead and put the condenser in. And it's going to go like this. find the bolts for it. Alright, here we are, air conditioning condenser bolts. And there are four of them and they all basically look the same. I'm not sure why I have a rev nut there, but. socket. Don't think that was supposed to come out. Okay, so I don't think it needs to be any tighter than that. It just holds uh, things together. Still not sure why I have those. Yeah, 
I've got one more, but I'm not sure what I did with it. There it is. So apparently these get pulled in, not the best of uh, arrangements here. And this is definitely easier to do with the grill out. Uh, this would be a giant pain in the ass to do with the grill installed. I wouldn't have the versatility of access. Well, for the moment we've all been waiting for, a junkyard radiator, courtesy of LKQ. sure that this radiator won't get replaced, but in the meanwhile, it'll certainly do the job. And It'd just be better if it starts as far down as it's going to go. is looking pretty good. One more one more thing. Uh, let's get an actual socket and What's left to do So 
I was able to buy a brand new shroud for the radiator for a fraction of what the yo-yos on eBay wanted. Uh, the junkyards and, and everybody were pricing it against um, brand new factory made parts and Omic makes, or Omix makes a um, quite rather affordable unit. Let's see, that must be caution fans, that must go up. And it looks like this is right where this goes. So boy, that was a good idea to put all that in before we uh, do this. Let me find the shroud bolts. shroud bolts and again this is just way easier to put together while it's out of the vehicle and then it's just all going to get lifted in uh, this shroud was like 60 bucks on Amazon so with free free delivery um, even Rock Auto got beat there which is kind of surprising because normally they're the dirt cheap price leader This looks like it's a 13, so let me get that socket out. No, oh, no, it's an 11. Hmm, okay. Plastic in this is probably not as tough as the original, but this will work just fine. It'll be okay. Uh, the real question is going to be: Does it does it fit perfectly? Because the engine has shifted a little bit. So at this point, I've got a little bit of work to do on the uh, inside of the engine, and then this is ready to go back in. Um, really wish that I had enough of this hose that I could run this all the way to here, because uh, that's what needs to happen. So I need about another four or five feet of this hose. Uh, I might stop and go do that here in a little bit. I'm waiting on power steering pump hoses. That's that's kind of my dilemma right now. They'll be here today. Looking for something to do with this. air conditioning hoses um, mainly because the other ones are just they're just old I mean that's really it 
and everything wears out after time. And I'm putting, these were really quite affordable and inexpensive. Um, so let's see which one goes where. Got the old ones. seals that I'm taking off. Thank you. 
then I'm just kind of setting them back down. I got to dig in my other parts box. Um, I've got a new everything for the AC system. see what I can get done uh, I don't know why Rock Auto was telling me that my power steering hoses would be here today when they shipped yesterday but when I looked at the FedEx tracking it shows they're coming from Connecticut and they left Connecticut at 830 this morning so uh, it says Sunday I'll believe that when I see it uh, I really don't expect it to get here in 24 hours from Connecticut that's a long way away. So in the meanwhile, that gives me plenty of time to work on Jeep stuff. So we're gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna, you know, deal with this and let's see. Yep, I think this is the one I want. So, Let's go ahead and let's just flush this thing. So that requires pulling that. That's a deep socket. Um, I want to say it's probably a 13 deep. how this is held in. Uh, looks like there is a socket on the back side.
it's five sixteenths, but we'll see. It is exactly five sixteenths. idea why this is so difficult. Uh, looks like it swells a little bit as it gets tall the higher in the, in the bracket. All right so I am going to take that bolt out because I think once I do the whole thing will drop off. if anything runs out of this. Or 
surface tube goes away with the glitter that's in it. Let me get set up to flush and I'll be right back. Alright, so I've got some flush fluid and uh, I'm going to flush the air conditioning system here. Hopefully this is pretty uneventful. So you pressurize this and you fill it with flush fluid and then you put this against here and So far it's just running right back out. So uh don't think this doesn't look right. Let me see if I can solve this problem. Alright, so I'm having problems with getting the right pressure, so I'm gonna do this the other way. Oh, if I don't leak down on my pressure first. Air turn on my air compressor. this and see if I can blow it out. flush through here. Pain in the ass. It takes four hands. Looking pretty clean. gun and blow the rest of this uh, fluid out. Really time for some new air fittings and hoses, but that's 
on today's project. We're just flushing all the oil out. So I'll be right back. Alright, so. watch right there let me see if I've got I might have another blow gun I have a large collection of air tools all there is to that right back. okay so uh, at this point I'm gonna go ahead and plug back in my camera so it stays charged um, I can mount this in here but I'm not gonna do anything with it beyond mounting um, It's just going to sit there until it's ready to be hooked up. Uh, I will hook it up right before I'm ready to install or to vacuum the system out. Um, that will preserve the integrity of the uh, desiccant cartridge that's in there, or the little bag of desiccant which absorbs moisture from the air. Alright, so let's go back to this. And the little one needs to go in first. And the little pretty sure okay it has a cartridge on it already so we'll go ahead and pull this off all right so before we install that we want to lube that And 
this is where having a small can of of uh, refrigerant oil comes in handy, and it doesn't it doesn't stay good forever, so you can't. can't rely on it like it's open it use it throw it away but we can go ahead and oil all of this it ain't gonna hurt anything not necessary but not hurt anything to come up to here so that's that's correct that's the service port and there should be an o-ring in here in fact if there's not an o-ring in here that will cause your shit to leak um, so that's a problem so I'm gonna go ahead and put the washer back on here and get it hand tightened and then let's look at this one so this one has one piece it has o-rings and it comes with a spare set I don't know why it comes with a spare set but it does how they expect you to get the spare set out okay so we're gonna pull this one off. Oh, 
sure as hell doesn't fit there. Okay, we got a problem. That hose is not fitting. Ain't no fucking way. That's right. Double check the old one. Everything else is right except for this bend. Let me see if <clears throat> feeling ballsy. Could have gone horribly wrong and uh, could have broken it, but I think we're okay. I don't recommend trying that at home, if at all. This would be an absolute pain in the ass with the grill in. Still gonna have to bend it a little bit. Uh, let me get it torqued. Uh, I brought the torque sheet. No, I just printed it and didn't bring it out here. Let me go get the torque sheet. Okay, so the discharge line is 18 foot pounds. So we're gonna slip in here. see in here there is an o-ring and here there is not there should be an o-ring up inside there so I'll have to find one that fits a good idea just to buy a set of these when you do this so let's see if this one fits on here nope uh, that one doesn't have one either but it really should that one does and it doesn't fit either. And I'm 
one on here, I'm just gonna dip my finger in the oil and, and I'm gonna apply the oil to here because I can't get my finger all the way down in there. Oh, that, that goes on there and that's not where that needs to be. Again, that was the one we decided should have had an O-ring. So I'm just gonna fish through the O-rings and see if I find one that, that fits. Uh, that's got a pretty good chance of fitting, so we'll just drop it down in here. seat it with my finger and then it will go in here. O-ring is just back up to make sure it stays sealed. Alright, so on to our next task. Um, we've got two switches that look damn near identical. Wow, can't believe I did that. So I gotta go look at the order and see which one is which. Um, I bet even the connectors are similar. Yeah, so that's a two blade connector. This is a three blade connector, so that solves that. Um, the one with the two blade connector goes up here. And as before, I wanna put a little bit of oil on it. Uh, just don't wanna pinch the sensor. These only go on hand tight. So despite the fact that it has to go there. Sure doesn't go there. This is not going to fit. the old sensor. And it fits just fine. So, it'll get reused. Um, can't really do anything with these until the radiator's in and then they just, they'll, they'll go down there. So that's a service port, uh, that's a high pressure service port. So the low pressure service port's over here. And it has a, a O-ring down in here, it should. I don't see one, so I'm gonna add one, but I'll uh, mess with it right this second. Uh, let me see if I can figure out what the low pressure port used to be. Alright, so there is a connection over here for a low pressure. 
pressure sensor and that's where that used to be. So we'll lube it up and it has two connectors so the new one has three that in the work. So I'm just going to use the one off the old one. I don't think there's anything wrong with these sensors, but the ones from Rock Auto clearly don't fit. Okay, so here's a great example of where it pinched the uh, O-ring.
All right, I was not planning to reuse those uh, switches, so Rock Auto's gonna get 40 bucks worth of switches back because they don't fucking work. Um, all right, I don't know there's a whole lot I can do. Uh, I did to conclude that the this is not, um, this is broken, a uh, little mounting tie is broken off, so it will get secured in here with a zip tie because I'm not going to spend a ton of money on it. And then these hoses need to be rerouted ever so slightly, so hopefully I have enough for that. I think I do. Um, yeah, fuck it. Let's go ahead and repair the uh, purge solenoid. So I'm going to pull the Tupperware off. And I'm going to zip tie this in place. But it'll be easier to zip tie it in place if I thread it through here in the right direction first. This thing is like uh, 75 bucks. On Amazon so it's kind of expensive uh, and I don't see any reason to replace it just because the little plastic clip broke off when I can secure it with zip ties so two zip ties seems to be enough So this opens five to ten times a second uh, when the engine is at the right, is running at the right speed and a bunch of other conditions have been met and it allows the um, charcoal canister in the back of the vehicle to purge the gasoline that's been gathered there. So needless to say it's going to be hard to reach that's going to have to come off so let's start with that crimped down. I wasn't expecting it to um, crush that easily, but whatever. challenge is I'm um, just can't get a good grip on this thing all right there we go
button for punishment here. Now we got to hook the lower one up, and hopefully I have enough hose for this. Um, yeah, I'm sure I do. So I'm going to undo the zip ties that I installed because I want this loose to work on it. Probably the easiest that will ever be to remove. doesn't require a whole lot of force so I'm going to use the little one out of this kit that I bought uh, you know the kit was a whole lot cheaper than buying uh, these individually at the auto parts convenience store So this one's going to be really difficult to do, and that's okay. I'm up to the challenge. So let me grab something that will make this easier for me. leverage the most abused tool in America, the screwdriver. hands are hurting that's that's the problem I'm having and of course you know if Chrysler had set these just a little bit further apart this wouldn't be happening Uh, 
All right, that's the solution to that. Again, I'm just, my hand is going numb and I'm having a difficult time. This, this is a little bit smaller than it should be. So let me go to a bigger size. fingers are literally going numb as I'm doing this, which is a good sign that I should stop, but, or at least go take some painkillers. All right, longer one does make this easier. And again, uh, this is just another shitty example of Chrysler's engineering without regard to uh, maintenance. Um, they don't sell this little tiny ass tubing anywhere. So it makes it really difficult to maintain the vehicle. But it probably saved them 50 cents in manufacturing. And you know, when you can sell the vehicles and you just trick everybody into thinking that you don't maintain vehicles, you just replace them, I guess it doesn't matter. Because the answer is, you can buy another one. Got that one done. And then, yep, it's gonna fit. So we just need to find another post clamp for that. restores that problem and I'm definitely getting some good mileage out of my parts probably needs another 90 that's irritating um, Yeah, I'm gonna put another 90 in here. that these are simply uh, PEX fittings. Well, that one might not be.
Um, the other thing I can do is cut this one loose and reposition it. So that's probably the easiest thing to do. This was originally a piece of plastic that was custom formed and yada 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 and yeah well now it's not. And in case you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using barricade uh, fuel hose by Gates to good quality product that should withstand vapor pressure. It's a very low pressure line. I don't think this will be an issue. All right, while we are working on horse shit uh, vacuum systems, which would be all of them, we need to deal with this. Because this is another little piece of Tupperware that's no longer made or available. So that part goes down there. This part turns and comes up here. And I've got just the solution for this as well. So this is four millimeter tubing. And I ordered it on Amazon and it should be more than sufficient. It's silicone tubing. vacuum tubing shorter is better so I'm gonna route it like this now that is not four millimeters but I think we can get it to stretch all right so that fixes that and it's a little long though Next question is, I bet that was supposed to be in there. Yeah, that looks right.
right, and I'm out of the one size, uh, which unfortunately I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need more of. Pretty sure should have had one here. Right there. I don't think these other ones are big enough. I'm gonna try. Nope, that ain't happen. Let me try the bigger one. I've got several sizes of these. certainly not going to fit. That's a 9.3. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and install some hoses here. Uh, this one goes this way. like this. Let me find the clips for that. even that old but they are a little bit on the crusty side these are 2016 and they are actually Mopar hoses but I'm replacing them with gates okay so here that goes there so we'll take that off too and salvage it so this is not in bad condition uh, and again it's uh, got a 2016 date on it uh, but I'm replacing it because I have the engine out and it's just really easy to do at this point I do trust Gates. Gates makes a quality product and I don't anticipate any issues. I need to rough that up a little. I have 
have some emery cloth. Uh, this is nothing magical. Let me put that in far enough away that I can easily get that on there. and set these hoses I don't think that's going to be an issue and again I have brand new gates hoses that are being installed uh, pretty sure that one goes up there and this one goes back down here so let me get the clamps first don't look like much but okay to use a pair of slip jaw pliers and it needs to be open just a little bit more so gets loose that gets loose there's a little bit of uh, spring force there pair of pliers that are special for this but they don't work.
Wow. I'm not sure why these are the preferred solution. I uh, personally don't think much of them. But everybody online swears by them while I swear at them. I would have preferred a different clamp. But that's the OEM solution, so I'll leave it in place. I think that's right. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the lower one in place. it it's uh, seen better days it might actually be although that would be kind of surprising hard time believing that that's right. Well, apparently it is. So I'm not going to make the final connection. I'm actually going to loosen the other one too. Um, until I have the radiator in well, shit, that's going to be a pain in the ass to get to with radiator in. Um, that's about all I can do at this point. The only other thing I could do is put the fan in, but I'm not going to mess with that today. Um, we're basically waiting on power steering hoses at this point. I don't know what that goes to. I think it was up here somewhere. Um, but, uh, yeah, I need the power steering hoses to go in. At which point I can um, button the Jeep up. If I had the power steering hoses, I could put the Jeep together today. Uh, oh, the other thing I need to do is I need to flush the gasoline out of this. Uh, I don't know if that rises to the level of being filmed. Um, yeah, what the hell. All right, I've got the uh, fuel system purged. I added a few gallons of gasoline to the tank. Uh, yesterday, the other day I purged the rest of it. So what we need to do at this point is get this back in between here. Oh, that, that could have been a pain in the ass. All right, so that goes on there and then this. this let's see there we go <clears throat> so I should be able to turn that on and should not get any gas leakage if I do I've got a problem
basically done. All right, that's it, guys. That's all I can do today. Uh, I'm waiting on um, power steering hoses, and then I can install a radiator. I, I guess I could add oil to it. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that while I'm waiting. So hold on, I'll put the oil in. All right, so it takes 5W30, which would be really nice if there was a label that hadn't worn off. I don't know why they didn't put that up here. It's a pain in the ass. It does take six quarts with a filter change. I'm going to need something to open this. Because, yeah, the mobile likes their seals. <laughs> First, I'm going to put the, the one quart in, and then we'll add the six. getting it back on the road. Um, I am going to need a new battery, uh, but I don't think I'm going to do that right this second. I might do that tomorrow. I irritate myself and go to Walmart. I like to get my wall batteries at Walmart because they are um, everywhere and affordable. So, right back. 